stand here today on this stage and Lord we say with all of our heart that we believe Lord people are watching from all over the world that say the same things that they believe so Lord we believe in you and your word and your son and the blood of your son Jesus and we trust in that blood as our only deliverance our only Savior we believe your word and the word was made flesh and dwelled among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father hallelujah we believe Come on, Roxanne, in the spirit real strong. We believe. Come on, say it. I believe. I believe. I believe in the cross. I believe in the cross. I believe. Oh.
The scripture declares in the book of Job that when God breathes, the frost comes. I was thinking on that earlier this morning, that when he breathes, the frost comes. You know, we say when it gets cold and we breathe, that you can see your breath. Actually, what you're seeing is a reaction between the breath and the temperature around you. A disruption takes place in the atmosphere. And when God breathes a prophetic word, when God breathes, the atmosphere is disrupted. So no matter what you're facing today, no matter what may be coming your way, no matter what, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what it seems like, today is a breath of God coming your direction and it's disrupting the atmosphere around you. It's disrupting the atmosphere and a reaction is taking place. When God approached the Red Sea and he breathed, the scripture said, out of his nostrils, he breathed and the scripture said that the water stood up and congealed in its depths. When he breathes, a disruption takes place in the atmosphere. And today, the atmosphere is being disrupted on your behalf. Things are not going to remain the same as you've known them. They're going to get better. They're going to be disrupted. The enemy's forces cannot sustain such an attack against you because God is breathing. He is breathing a prophetic word today from this stage to your life. From this platform into all the world, it goes. God is breathing. God is breathing. God is breathing. Come on.
like that sound, Austin. Hallelujah. What's some sounds, huh? Sound. Sound going out into all the earth. You know, there was a song Robin was talking about we did here at Church International Sunday. The lyrics were powerful, but the sound that the Lord led her to put in the song is the old, was a something to that effect. That's the sound of the lyrics in the spirit and that's the sound that angels respond to the voice of his word and we are the voice of his word when we speak his word but there are sounds that go forth into the angelic kingdom because everything was founded with God said released a sound so a sound a prophetic wind has been released today and it disrupted the atmosphere around you Think about that. A prophetic release, the breath of God disrupts the atmosphere around. And His breath comes to us today. Oh, His breath comes to us today in a sound, in a sound. His breath, say it, comes to me. Come on. His breath, oh, comes. 
of the wind Oh Let healing begin On the wings of the wind Let your healing begin On the wings of the wind Oh
to send healing on the wind of his wings. Let God arise. Come on, in your home, wherever you are, begin to say it. If you can, on your knees, your hands up, or your hands raised, whatever you can do, begin to say it out loud. Let God arise. Let God arise in my life. Let my enemies be scattered. Let may God arise. Come on. Come on. What, no matter what you're facing. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Today is a day of seeing. It's a day of seeing what God wants us to see. Seeing beyond our present circumstances into the place of victory in our future. If we can ever see such a thing as that, then we can see what God sees. He told Moses at the Red Sea, he said, you see the Egyptians today that you see, you will see them again no more forever. He was instructing Moses, not only would they be gone, but never look back at them again. Don't envision that life anymore. Don't envision the life of slavery anymore. When you can finally see inside you the vision of your tomorrow. Then you can draw the faith from tomorrow even into today. Why? Because 
Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God and envisioning your tomorrow on the inside of you now as God preaching to you from the future. Today's a day of seeing. Train your eyes to see. be back in a few moments to see what else God is going to talk to us about. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I want to welcome you back into the 11th hour today. Man, watch some sounds, watch some music today. The Lord, it's like he, he brought us up to look over the horizon and let us see something in the far future, in, the, in our destiny. We looked over that and saw it all. Hallelujah. Or saw some of it anyway. Man, just a little bit of, of destiny. <laughs> you know, it's like the old saying, a little bit will do you, man. And, uh, well, it, I want to see more of it, don't you? I mean, there were sounds happening today that, that um, the Lord had me play my eagle guitar today, the, the, the eyes of the seer. Now, I want you to, uh, well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your anointing, Lord. Your word is the answer to everything. There is nothing beyond your word, Lord. Your word is you in written form. And we give you praise, and it's dear to us, Lord. And it's dear to the life of every believer. It's dear to the life of those who love you with all their heart. So, Lord God, I thank you for your precious word. Hallelujah, Lord. Every saint that was ever laid to rest and put in and passed on from this life to the other that ever had your word laid upon their chest. Lord, they loved your word. And Lord, honor that, Lord, that it was placed within their, even their bones, that their bones will respond to the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you praise and honor and glory. Amen. You know the word of God is so quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword that it pierces even to the dividing asunder of spirit, soul, and body. And, and the book of Hebrews declares that. Did you know that, in, that if you think about it, Jeremiah said he tried to quit so many times. He said, but it's like fire shut up in my bones. How can I quit? And when Elisha was buried, that, that they threw a dead man in his tomb and it landed on his bones and touched his bones and the man woke up again. There's something about the word. There's something about the call of God. There's something about that that goes down into the very fiber of someone's bones. That I believe that's part of what's going to call the dust and, the, and all that have been buried in the sea, land, or wherever to come back bone to bone and, and resurrect because it never leaves. It's always there. Hallelujah. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 4 today uh, just a, for just a little while. I want to look at this scripture. Revelation 4, uh, after this I looked, John said, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. Listen to this next line. And I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. I will show you the things that much, must be hereafter in the future. The future, the prophetic deals with the future. It deals with a lot of things, and there's a lot of things that go with the office of a prophet and in the prophetic utterance of believers everywhere. But one thing, one underlying thing that cannot be gotten away from is that prophetic and prophecy deals with the future, with the hereafter. Now, the Scripture says that the kingdom of God is within you. Did you know that? It says that the kingdom of God is within you. Now, let me find a scripture here that the kingdom of God, wow, now, yes. Listen to this in Luke 17 and verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo here, lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So within you, God has placed the kingdom. 
So inside you is your future. Inside you is your hereafter. Inside you is your destiny. God placed it there. Now, notice this. Jesus said one time in, in the scripture, people quote it this way, that he said, I, I came to seek and save uh, those which were lost, which he did that. But he actually said, I came to seek that and save that, that which was lost. There is the, everything when man fell, his destiny was lost to him. His future was lost. That's why you call it lost. People just stumble around. They don't know where they're going. And, be, and it takes Jesus coming into someone's life to restore that. That what? That destiny. That call that was inside them. See, when a child is conceived, there's a spark of electricity that takes place when the seed and the egg collide. And, and science has proven that it lights up. It just sparks like that. I've seen a, like video of it or, or however they did that. And it showed that burst of light, that energy. That's resurrection power. That's God visiting someone's baby shower. And he brings these gifts. He brings this destiny. He brings this call. And when that child is born and, and, and splits the womb and comes into the open of this, this world and this atmosphere, that child will cry. That child, I believe, is crying for its destiny. It's crying for that which God deposited to come to it in life. And when a child is a small, just a, a child innocent in their heart toward God, those gifts will flash out of them. And they act strange to people. And they'll say, do you know my child saw this? My child heard that. I think they saw an angel. And adults have groped around in darkness so long, but the child hasn't. And it hadn't yet taken hold of them. But then as that child begins to gravitate toward the dark places, the gifts and the light that shine within them begins to dim and they can't find it anymore. And we call that being, it's lost now. They're lost. But Jesus is the light of the world. St. John 1 declares that that light came into the darkness and shined into it and the darkness couldn't hold it down and seize on it. So when the, if you want those gifts to come back alive and you to be able to see your hereafter, then you have to invite Jesus into your heart. You invite Jesus, the risen son of the living God, to come into your heart and be your Lord and personal Savior. And if you do that, then the light comes into the darkness and the darkness can't hold it down and seize on it. And suddenly your hereafter comes alive in you again. And you get this hunger to search out the light to go toward the master himself and he can reveal your destiny to you. So you ought to do that right now. Say, Lord Jesus, you say, how do I do that? Well, the apostle Paul said in Romans 10, 9 and 10, he talks about it, says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. So what you want to do is say, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And he said, then if you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart God raised him from, your, from the dead and confess with your mouth that he's your Lord, you'll be saved. So you say, I believe in my heart, Jesus, God raised you from the dead, and I confess with my mouth that right now you are my Lord. Live in my heart. Cleanse me of sin. And I'm telling you something. Now your destiny is available to you again. It's even visible to you. And you begin to see it as you spend time in his word. Hallelujah. Now, Revelation 4, the, he says, Come up hither, and I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. So there is a hereafter that he's wanting to show us. Now, the future living within you must become visible inside you. Once that future becomes visible within you, you can, you can draw the faith of that tomorrow. You can draw the faith of that tomorrow because a visible future within you, within your spirit, 
is God preaching to you from your tomorrow. Once you see that the, the visible hereafter that God has planned for you inside your spirit, that is God, you can draw the faith from that tomorrow. No matter what you see today because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and that's God preaching to you from your tomorrow. So you can draw the faith of that future. And you can live today by the faith of the Son of God. That's what the scripture says. Now, over in Matthew, let's go over there to Matthew chapter 4. I want to see this. And uh, a verse 4. Let's look at that. And he answered, this is on the Mount of Temptation, and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. That was Jesus who said that. Now, that is from your tomorrow. He's breathing your direction. He's talking to you. And you're one word behind God all the time. But you know what else that means? That means if you live by every word that comes out of his mouth, you're not only just one word behind him all the time, but you can hear every word he says. Hallelujah. Now, John uh, 8, 12, let's go over there. We want to look at a few scripture like this so that you can see it and, and it can get in your eyes and in your ears. Um, John 8, let's see if that's where I want to be. John 8 and um, verse 12 then Jesus spake, Je then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isn't that amazing? So he is light, and that light is our life. So he is our life. He is our breath. St. John chapter 20. Let's look at that. St. John 20. We're just, I want to be sure and, and see some of this together. Uh, verse 19, we'll start. John 20 and verse 19. And that same day in the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them, stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Well, they would need peace when he walked through the wall, wouldn't they? And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive you, the Holy Ghost. So he's our light. He's our breath. He's our breath. Think about this. He, uh, John chapter 6, let's look at that. Go back to John 6, and let's see this. He's our life. He's our breath. And we'll look at, uh, let's see, verse 35. It says, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So he's our light, he's our breath, he's our bread. He's our food. He's everything to us. You must hold on by faith to the reality of God he's given you. There are two realities within you. And I should say two realities before you. There are two realities before you. If you take hold of the wrong reality, it's just like this. A prophet can get to a place to where things become so overwhelming in their spirit. Uh, I'm talking about the office of a prophet now. A prophet can get to a place because their passion is high. 
and, and they, they're passionate about the Word, passionate about the Son of God, passionate about the Holy Ghost, passionate about the people, to see the people receive and walk into destiny. That if they see things, they can pick up on sadness around them, or they can pick up on on, and some of the intercessors, you know what I'm talking about. You can pick up on sadness. You can pick up on, on uh, gladness and happiness. A prophet can be sitting on the front row and everybody in the room crying and the prophet's laughing. And they say, what are you laughing for, prophet? And they say, well, I can see what's coming. And then they can be in a room and everybody is laughing and the prophet's weeping. And crying, and they say, what are you crying for, prophet? And he said, well, because I see what's coming. But there's always these two realities before you. There's a sadness that comes out of the world, and the world stealing the faith of the people, and darkness prevailing in places. Then there's always a gladness God sets before you. And so you can choose the blessing or the curse, and he, he sets them before you. But a prophet sometimes can get so overwhelmed that they, they become what the world calls melancholy. They become into a place where they can start talking out of and right in deep passion and deep emotion. But if you don't watch it, you'll begin to call for that world to come. That world, when it's sensed and 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 the Lord has shown you a great light and yet fear or, or depression or, or even becoming melancholy and, and what the world would call romantic in, in depression. When that begins to come, that must be taken immediately and put into the world of intercession so that intercessions and intercessors can pray the death out of it. And a prophet has to keep looking toward the light and calling in that. Hallelujah. Now, if we go over to, let's see, Revelation. I don't know how much of this the Lord's going to even let me talk about, but, but I will try. Revelation chapter 5, no, chapter 4. Look at chapter 4, and we'll look at verses 6 and 7. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast was like an, a calf. And the third beast had a face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. A lion, an eagle, an ox, and a man. If you look through the eyes of the lion, and that's all you look through, then all you see is war. That's what you'll see because the lion comes to war. The lion comes to disrupt and change everything. So you have to look through the eyes of a lion. But if that's all you look through, you'll see war. If you only look through the eyes of the ox, you will only see sacrifice and work. If you only look through the eyes of a man, then you'll only see limita limitations and corruption. But if you look through the eyes of an eagle, then you will see beyond the war to the, the place beyond the battlefield, a place of safety. And you can call from the sky, come this way. The lion, the fight. The eagle, the sea that sees. The ox that sacrifices. And the man in the faces of God, all, these have, all of them have this expression, and the man would be Christ Jesus, that all these manifested in him. So in the prophetic, we have to, we have to see all these things. We have to look at all these things. And God wants you to be raised up to see your destiny. He wants you to see your destiny. He wants you to come up to a place today. The sounds that were made on the stage was a place of the future. 
It was a place where you could hear the notes. They got higher and higher and higher and almost screamed out. And it was like, listen, uh, I can see beyond. This will not always stay the same. And so the eagle sees. The lion fights. The ox works and is sacrificed and, and, is, and sacrifices. And the man, Christ Jesus, brings it all together in one name. Do you understand? So you can't look at it in the natural. These are not natural beings. These are angelic creatures full of eyes, and each one has something to see. And I'm talking about something that's beyond me right now. I'm talking about something that's still way out there right now. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is the culmination of all these. And he took the corruption of a man. He took the corruption of a man. So now you don't have to look through the eyes of a natural man. You can look through the eyes of the resurrected man who was perfect in every way. Hallelujah. So I hope that made sense to you. The lion you look through his eyes, you can see how to war. You look through the eagle's eyes and you see beyond the battlefield to the place of safety. You look through the eyes of the ox and you're ready to sacrifice and work. If you look through the eyes of the man, Christ Jesus, then you look to the perfect place where you can actually live in his perfection. Because if we only look at a natural man, we always see his corruption. But he has perfection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I know people will write in and say, yeah, Brother Robin, that's just kind of crazy. And, and you, you said some things that, no, I'm saying things in the spirit that's beyond us. It's beyond me anyway. I'm, I'm looking out there, and I'm looking over the horizon at something. But we'll find it. Hallelujah. And then the perfect order of this is the lion that fights, the eagle that sees, the ox that sacrifices and has great strength, and the man, Christ Jesus, who dealt with all the corruption. Now we look through these and we can operate in these anointings right here, all because of him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, there's a time and a season for every purpose under the heavens, Ecclesiastes declares. A time and a season for every purpose, uh, uh, for, uh, for everything that happens under heaven. But after a while, once a time ends, you've got to let go of that time and don't carry that time over into the next time or it won't look right to you. It's distorted. You can't just stay in one time and not move to the next time or it gets a distorted view. Of something. Hallelujah. And you'll confuse the time. You know, what if, what if Joshua had stood at the Red Sea and said, Moses, no, hey, <laughs> don't stretch your rod out over that sea. I got a horn I want to blow. Well, it was anointed, but it was for another time. And it would have distorted that time. But what if they'd have got over there and suddenly Caleb ran up to Joshua at Jericho and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, let's don't sound that horn. I got Moses' rod back over here. Let's stretch it toward the walls. You can't carry one time into the next. There's always something God is going to do new in this time. Hallelujah. You know, there's a, a time to weep and a, and a and a time to laugh, and you can't carry the time of weeping when it's over into your time of laughter, or everything in the time of laughter looks sad, and you'll never enjoy it. Amen. Praise God. Oh, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to close right here, and I can't seem to find a place for it to close it. So we're, we're in this prophetic time. Yes, Lord. You want to let your destiny become visible inside you.
Don't let somebody tell you that's impossible. Don't let somebody tell you you can't come out of that. You have a dream God gave you to build or to do. Don't let somebody tell you that you can't do that. Don't let somebody tell you that. They're trying to hide the vision. That that you're hearing in you is God preaching to you from your tomorrow. He's preaching to you. He's sending his word into your spirit from your tomorrow into today so you can draw the faith of tomorrow that goes beyond any failure that's around you. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Today was a, a great day of sound and sight and, and word and, and destiny. Amen. Well, come on, Krista, and receive our offering today. And uh, I'm turning it over to you today in a great note of victory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So come on and receive our offering and tell the people, you know, because that's the thing. God sees them prosperous in their tomorrow. Yes, he does. You know, his word always deals with your future. That's right. It deals with your future because if all you had was the present to see, you'd be in trouble. It'd just be in trouble because every, every day is a... You, do you know what the enemy wants to do? Is roll the stone over the, the time you're in. Mm -hmm. So you get in a time, he rolls a stone shut over it yeah. so you can't get out of that time. That's right. But that's not going to happen. Christ Jesus, he said, I am the way, that's right. the truth and the life. And if his stone rolled away, yours can too. Hallelujah. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. He is the way. Praise God. Well, it is offering time on the 11th hour. This is our time that you, you get to, I get to, you get to, we all get an opportunity to sow our seed. And, you know, that's, that's a, a statement I learned a long time ago in, in fitness was, the attitude is not I have to exercise. The attitude is I get to. Because there are people that can't, they wake up every single day and they can't go exercise because they can't hardly move. You get to. So that is the attitude I used to tell my participants in classes was you don't have to exercise. Remember, you get to. You get to do this. Because... Think of those that are out there that, that can't. And that is my same principle concerning the offering. We don't have to sow. We get to sow. We get to sow into the kingdom of God. We, it, it really is a privilege. It's a privilege. You know, I preached that time about the uh, giving God your answer and how Satan wants your answer. And how I saw it as two big old holes, like in the ground. Two big old, the, these massive holes in the harvest system where you're sowing seed. And one of them is the correct answer. And when you sow it in there, it turns green. When you sow it in that one, it turns red. When it's the wrong answer. We have an opportunity to give God our answer. Because the scripture says that money answereth all things. So the Lord told me one time, he said, Satan wants your answer, which in turn means what? He wants your money. He wants your money. Why? So he can continue spewing filth across the world. He literally cannot do anything in this world without money. And so he continues to get his... Okay, you want to know how he, how he pushes his agenda constantly, day in, day out? Is because he gets it. He gets it into media. He gets it into entertainment. And he, he's constantly funding it. So it goes over and over and over again. And, and Christians say, we need to occupy the airspace. We need to occupy this, but we want it for free. That's not happening. Take the money from his hand. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, and I'm just the one it's laid up for. But you got to go into the enemy's camp and take it back. 
There is actually work that we have to do. You actually have to go in and you take it back. Well, how, how can I do that? How, how do you go into the enemy's camp? Why don't you give God your answer? Why don't you start giving God your answer? Sowing it into the kingdom. Funding His agenda. What is His agenda? I wish above all things that you prosper and you be in health even as your soul prospers. What is his agenda? Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is the whole agenda of Christianity in one scripture. It's right there and it, it sums it all up in one scripture. And so we've got, if we're going to occupy until he comes... We've got to go in and take back what belongs to us. Because the enemy, he's making sure he got people working overtime. Spewing his words out there. On all social media, all TV. And you say, well, I don't watch TV anymore. Well, you got, chances are you got one streaming service. You got one, at least. Well, guess what? He infiltrates that one too. Every place he can, we have to infiltrate it also. We are in a head-to-head -head battle. Between, it is the ultimate battle of good and evil right now. I mean, this, this is it. Like, this is Star Wars come to life right now. It is the ultimate battle between good and evil. People say, well, I, I don't like Star Wars. But you know what? Just hush for a second. Star Wars is actually meant, it was actually meant to tell a story about good and evil. And good always won. But we've, we've got, like you are living in a time where you got to wake up right now and realize, oh my goodness, like I'm in an actual, I'm in an actual war. I'm in an actual fight, which means I've got to go head to head. Whatever field that you are in, whatever field that you're in, the enemy is trying to infiltrate that field. And you've got to go into your field and go head to head with him. And guess what? You have the tools to beat him. You do. You just got to use it. So it's like we're in ministry. Okay, well, how... Does the devil try to infiltrate ministry? More than any other field. <laughs> more, more than any other field, he tries to infiltrate the ministry world. Why? Because if he can get people deceived, listening to things that are not in this book, then he can lead people astray. So we are doing our job in our field to go head to head with him. And what he's trying to do, you got to do the same thing also. And to do that, we've got to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's just going to take money. There's no other way around it. It's going to take finances. Plane tickets cost money. They will not let you pass that gate without a ticket. They just won't. You're go you can get in a car that has a full tank of gas, but at some point you're going to have to fill it back up. It's not going to run on one tank forever. It's just going to take finances. And God intends on us to have it to be able to go and preach the gospel. And how we do that is sowing into the kingdom. And so that is what we are doing right now. And we're going head to head with what he's trying to do with his answer. But we're giving God our answer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well... My answer is this, Luke 6, 38. It says, give, and it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto my bosom. For with the same measure that I meet with all, it shall be measured to me again. You say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, if you're a tither, Malachi three ten says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it 
and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. I believe it, I receive it, I call it done, in Jesus' name, amen, so be it. Roxanne, encourage us with some victory reports, amen. Yeah, I like that, the victory reports. Yes, well, I hope you all out there in the 11th hour world are having a good Tuesday. We have quite a few victory reports today that came in this past week um, through our email. Continue to do that. Send us your praise reports through email. Call the office so that we can rejoice with you. We can share them with the 11th hour family so everyone around the world can rejoice in what God's doing for you. This one says, uh, prayers have been answered. I had listened um, on a Sunday morning. This was September 24th, uh, so it was just a couple weeks ago. And I prayed for my husband's car to sell. And I asked my friend in Minnesota to pray with us about it as well. So she says, tonight at 6.30 p.m., which I think that was just a few days later, um, a friend reached out to my husband asking if the car was for sale. My husband said yes, and our friend stated, well, that sounds good. I'll take it. Take it off the market. So the car will be completely sold by October 7th when our friend returns from his trucking business. She says, G-I-A-G. So that was just a couple of days, and the car sold. You know, God has a quick return when you pray and ask and you stand believing. This one says, thank you so much for your prayers. Glory to God, my bops, he came back benign. Thanks again for your prayers. I stood on Nahum 1-9 that any disease and affliction will not arise a second time on me. In Jesus' name. So praise the Lord. Uh, this one says, um, I just wanted to give a praise report today. Uh, while watching the 11th hour, I requested prayer for my mother-in-law. She had fell and was at the ER as I was sending the, re the request. I declared over her no broke bones and complete healing. Several brothers and sisters in the chat agreed with me. Then I received a message from my sister-in-law that the doctor thought it was a broken tailbone. They ordered a CT of lower back, pelvis, brain, etc. And I again posted in the chat that I didn't receive the doctor's thoughts and declared no broke bones in Jesus' name. And I believe the report of the Lord. So just shortly after that, I received an update from my sister-in-law. No broken or fractured bones, just a, a bruised tailbone and no blood on her brain. So praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you again to the brothers and sisters that stood in agreement with me today. It says, look what the Lord has done. So hallelujah. We praise the Lord for that. I just have a few more quick here. This one says, I'm in tears as I write this praise report. I've been so blessed through CI. I'm a partner, and I've been sowing and thought I was reaping rather slowly. Well, at the end of August, my $112,000 student debt is paid in full. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a lot of money to be in debt. My goodness. So we rejoice with you over that. All student debt is canceled. If you got student debt, lift up your hands and say, I, I claim that for my student debt as well. So praise the Lord. And this last one, um, this person wrote in and said, today marks one year since I took my last drink. I was at the grand opening last year, and on one of the nights, one of the prophets had prophesied over him, you're free and you're done, and said, don't go back, don't go back. He said, Jesus then freed me from alcohol addiction. He said, all praise to Jesus and the Lord God. Thank you, Church International, for being obe obedient to the Lord. Well, without you, I don't think I would be here and free. So praise God for, for being sober for a year. That's amazing. So we praise God with you today. Thank you for sending in your victory reports. Send them to us so we can rejoice with our 11th hour family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Roxanne. <clears throat> you know, I, um, I was listening to Krista teach, and, and, and it, it came up in my spirit that you know, what you, what you should do is remember this. When, when Moses and the children of Israel left Egypt and they went through the Red Sea experience and all of that and God supernaturally delivered them, you know, even in Egypt when there was darkness so thick it could be felt, there was light in the land of Goshen where the Israelites lived. Well, this is the way it is. God always makes a difference in his people and the rest of the world. All he asks you and I to do is believe him. 
Now, when they got to the Red Sea, I mean, they got across the Red Sea, they headed to the Promised Land. Did you know that it, it was really only about an 11 to a 14 day journey from where they left to when they arrived at the Jordan? Moses says, send 12 spies across the Jordan. And he, he, he says, go spy out the land, so forth. And Joshua and Caleb, there was one from every tribe, and Joshua and Caleb, they went, they went with them. And uh, when all they came back, man, they had fruit so big, the grapes were so big, it took a man uh, on each end of a pole and the grapes in the middle of the pole to carry the big cluster back. It was just, it was a land surely flowing with milk and honey. And so when they got back, now they could see the grapes. They said, surely it is true. It is a land that is blessed. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. But, they said, see, that's where that big but gets in the way. It has, the but has to be moved. And once the but, the B-U-T is gone out of the way, they said, there's giants over here. We saw giants and said, these, are, these giants are so big, we look like grasshoppers in their sight, and we look like grasshoppers in our sight. So they were beaten when they saw the giants. Uh, suddenly the giant grapes didn't even appeal. And so Joshua and Caleb tried to steal the people. And they said, listen, these are nothing. He said, they're bread for us. The Lord has given us, let us go up at once and take it. But the other ten caused an uproar in the people. Think about it. There's about three million there. And ten people caused such an uproar in the millions that those three million people lost their destiny and their generation. They never got to cross. They never got to cross. Now the ten that brought back the evil report, they did get to cross and see it, but they came back. And they never had intentions of going back. So they, the ten people caused the three million. It cost them their destiny. It cost them only ten can you imagine 10 voices silenced the voice of 3 million and changed their hearts to where they wouldn't go? And they all died in that wilderness except Joshua and Caleb. Every one of them died. And so 40 years they wandered and moved round and round. They camped at some places, an oasis here and there, and they would camp, but they kept moving, and they lived in these tents in the desert. Now, they had miracles because their feet, their shoes grew on their feet, their clothes grew on their body. God fed them with manna every day, every day he fed them. A rock followed them around and gave them water. But you know what? They wore the same clothes. They wore the same shoes. They saw the same scenery almost all the time, except for an oasis here and there. And don't you know, it was in their minds for a while. Man, there was a land. I, I wonder what that looked like. I don't know, but those grapes were big. But after a while, it faded, and they didn't ever get to see it. But not in Joshua and Caleb's mind. Those two always remembered that. And so when the next generation came up, because everyone else died in the wilderness, it said if they live three score and ten, which is 70, and even if by strength they make it to 80, their carcasses will fall in this wilderness. All from the report of ten people. See, every time God gives you and shows you your destiny and you get excited Oh, the Lord has always put it in my heart to, uh, uh, to open a bakery or whatever. And he's put it in my heart to do this. And I've always been good at it. And I've dreamed of this and dreamed. And everyone, and then you have somebody come to you. You can't do that. You can't do that. 
Well, why? God has showed it. No, no, you can't do it. But look at those grapes. No, no, you can't do it. But you know how good I am at baking. Yeah, but you can't do that. It costs too much money. And you know a bank would never help you. But they never mentioned that God could help them. And if God gave you the picture of destiny, he also provided everything it takes to make it happen. All you got to do is cross and head for it. And he will give you everything. So every time you have a vision of your destiny, there's always going to be some that come. And it's always a few. And it's always the least mouthed of the people that come to tell you why you can't. You have to ignore the can't and move the big butt out of the way so you can see into your future, into the hereafter. Hallelujah. And that's, that, that's, that was on my mind over there while Krista was teaching that there is nothing impossible if God has shown it to you. I, I'm, I'm saying this another time now. When you can see a vision of your tomorrow inside your spirit. That is God preaching to you from your future. And so therefore you can draw the faith from the future to bring that to pass. Hallelujah. Well, that's something I wanted to say and, it, and it's something that needed to be said. So just if someone is trying to talk you out of destiny, just smile and say, you know, I'm not interested in failure. Boy, that's a statement. I'm not interested in failing. I, I'm not interested in failing. I'm only interested in, in, in success and what I can do here and what the Lord has shown me I can do. So, so I, I'm not interested in that. Have a good day. And just walk on. Just say, I'm not interested. I'm not participating in failure. I'm not going to wonder my whole life what might have happened if I'd have crossed. Then your children, wouldn't it have been so much better if the, the new generation, 20 years old and up, uh, the 20 years old and under that did cross, wouldn't it have been so great if they could have crossed with their parents? Only Joshua and Caleb got to cross with that generation. And so you know what they ask him? If God was with you the way he, we heard he was with Moses, we'll follow you anywhere. He said, well, okay, bring out the Ark of the Covenant and had the priest carry it, step down in the water, and the waters of the Jordan were cut off from above and just dried up. So they could cross. Just like he was with Moses. Well, that's it, man. That fired them up. They went into the promised land and, and everybody's going in and, they're, and they, they win all these battles for their promises. And that's the next fight that's coming. When this war, this part of the war is ending, destiny takes over. And we're headed for a, another fight, but it's a fight for promises. It's a fight to take ground. And that's a war you war with joy. The only thing that caused them any grief in those fights and their inheritances was greed. Achan just got greedy. But I'm telling you, man, we're gonna, when we cross, we're going to head into those promises and it's going to be a good thing and God's going to do some wonderful things and, and, and you're not even going to remember Egyptians how you were in bondage anymore. The only thing remembered about them is by your enemies, how God dealt with them for your sake. Hallelujah. And so we're going we're gonna to do all that. So you have to just get ready and rise up and say, oh, yeah, I'm looking at the giant grapes, not the giant obstacles in my way. I'm looking at the giant fruit and not the giants that are trying to keep me from it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're well able to take the land. Praise God. Well, it's been good to be with you today on the 11th hour where we've talked about destiny, future, victories, and all kinds of things like that. The Lord is doing something big. Be a part of it. 
Hallelujah. How do I be a part of it? Just decide to be. <laughs> Just say, here am I, Lord. Let's go. How can I prepare for that? Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus came up out of the water and the Holy Ghost came, descended on him bodily like a dove. And I'm going to tell you, he didn't do one miracle until after that day. Then he entered ministry. You ought to do the same. You want to be in the service of the Lord, say, Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Let him come up on me. And then begin to speak in other tongues, yielding the most powerful member of your being, your tongue, to the Lord. Trusting for every syllable. Come on, start doing it. Somebody may look on and say, whoa, that sounds a little foolish. No, God chose the foolish things to confound the wise. They don't even, well, I don't want it to be just me. And the Holy Ghost ain't foolish, my friend, and neither is other tongues. Other tongues is actually the language that God and Adam spoke to one another in before Adam sinned. So he's wanting to restore all of it back to you. Amen. Can you imagine walking with God? Have you ever seen a, a little boy try to walk with their daddy? Their daddy's walking along like this and, and, and taking big strides. You know, when John was just a little boy, or, or he, I'd take big strides. He... he to him, it was huge. They don't tell him how tall I looked to him when he was that tall and looking up at me. You know, they used to laugh at John because he said, Diddy. Diddy? <laughs> They'd say, yeah, Diddy, Diddy. And so that's the way a lot of us say that when we're little here. And so, but can you imagine? And, and sometimes a child will have to kind of skip and get another step to keep up with you. Well, that's what's happening. Can you see God uh, taking us into our destiny, our future? He's taking these big old strides, and we're walking, looking straight up at him. Straight up at him, did he? We're looking right up at him. Father, and he's taking big old steps, and we're doing like this, trying to keep up and trying to walk, and he just smiles because it's the cutest thing in the world to him. And he knows if you keep coming, you're going to grow. Until the day comes you can walk with him like Adam did before he sinned. He said they walked together in the cool of the day, step by step. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. I want to tell all of our partners that I love you. I'm praying for you every day. I was praying over you last night. I'll be praying over you tonight. I will. I, I, I hold your names in my hand. So I can pray over you. You take courage. You will win if you just won't quit. The word of God will deliver you if it has to blast you out of the top. You stand on it. You say, well, what if they kill me? They can't do it but once. When you got born again, you really did all the dying you're ever going to do. Hallelujah. I don't know why I could weep standing here. But partners, I, I love you. I thank you. We do everything we can do because the Lord has raised you up as partners with us. And he, we work together. We walk together. We reach together. We hold together. And I want you to know I'm your partner. And I'm praying for you every day. Hallelujah. And I love it when we're out on the road and somebody comes up and says, I'm your partner. And if you'll ever notice when somebody says that, I stop. And I look around and it overwhelms you sometimes that people would be your partner, that they believe in what you're doing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Fights come and difficult times come. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is the answer for it all. And we are going to, we are committed to stand our ground and teach the word of the living God. 
and show in the prophetic realm your destiny and your future. Hallelujah. We'll be doing a, an Israel trip next year, and it's going to be a big one. And uh, soon there'll be some things announced about that. And uh, if you can, be a part of that. Hallelujah. I want to take the whole 11th hour team over there this time and really bring a prophetic service from the land of, of the lion. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let it roar from Zion. Praise God. Well, I guess that's all today. Uh, um, don't forget some of the things. Look on the website. Uh, we have an intelligence briefing coming up. Brother Steve, Steve Schultz is going to come down here and here live on this stage we're going to do a, an intelligence briefing. And I think, uh, and David and Stacy Wadded is coming to host it, Fly Over Conservatives. It's going to be great. It'll be an intelligence briefing that, that just may be the briefing that changes your whole life. You know, Steve and I did 40 of those, I think, before we stopped doing intelligence briefings, and now this is the first live one. Amen. Be praying for us. Well, until next time, we gather together around God's Word. I want you to remember and never forget that God is absolutely good. Shalom. Shalom.